everyone's back on flying. It is definitely back in the US. Travel is definitely coming back here in the United States. Morning is such a small world. I met up Jeff Brooks on a hotel shuttle on the way to the LAX airport. I'm going to San Francisco on United. He's flying Delta to JFK and travel is back. Everyone's back on flying and traveling right now is so exciting. Uh, look, travel is definitely coming back here in the United States. There's no doubt about it. I've flown uh, pretty regularly since about July of 2020 and you can really see an uptick in the number of people who are, who are here. And it's not just leisure travel. American Airlines announced just yesterday that 47 of their 50 biggest corporate accounts expect me back to full-time travel for their for their travelers by the end of this year and business travel is really um really what pays the bills for airlines that's what really gets them going and gone are the days when uh, seats were blocked and there was plenty of availability um on planes they are so much more packed than they ever were before every flight i've been on the last two or three months has been full hey the reason i came uh, out to la was to fly with jet blue on their brand new a321 neo it, has a new cabin, including the Mint Studio, which offers the largest bed on a US carrier and the largest TV on any US carrier. It was incredible, a really amazing experience. I highly recommend it. Jeff, do you have plans to fly on new airlines like a Velo or Breeze, something like that? Yeah, I, I certainly, uh, certainly hope to. Today, we just got the announcement from uh, Boom and United that they're going supersonic. There's just so many exciting uh, new things happening in aviation after a really tough year. It's great to see it coming back. Yeah, the grass is getting greener. Well put. Yeah, travel is definitely back in the US. It's actually rebound much quicker than we thought. When I booked a recent flight from LA to San Francisco, I was like amazed. There were 767-300, so I immediately booked on that flight. My name is Alberto Diaz. I'm the general manager here in Los Angeles. I'm also one of our uh, 737 captains here. And we're super excited, the employees are really excited to get over 100 flights uh, coming up here in June. We're at 97 today from uh, 75 or so. You know, at the low of COVID, we were at 12 flights. So it's a big, big ramp up for us. And um, right now we're just getting used to the workload and getting enough employees on, on board to, to handle all the extra work, but we're super excited, so. Super excited getting on a 767 wide body to San Francisco. I think that I can relate it to United Pilot the most because they inspire me. To love aviation when I was young. I grew up in Hong Kong, all I watch is United 747 coming in and also fly United across the Pacific and that bomb ship was there. I am Captain Rogowski, I'm flying with uh, Tony today, my first officer. We'll be uh, flying at 33,000 feet, about 484 mi uh, knots, uh, about 510 miles an hour and it's really exciting because we're flying a wide body from LA to San Francisco which is very rare so we're giving these passengers a great treat. And by the way, you look like Charlie Sheen, right? <laughs> Some people say that. I don't Not know. Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> this airplane must be 25 plus years old, right? It's been coming out in the late 90s, right? It's still a great airplane. It's still a great plane. It handles great. It's like a big Cadillac. It handles very smooth and it's a, it's a really fun plane to fly. I just love it. Like it's such a versatile airplane. You can do small and big routes and it's got the right 232 two at the back. Wow, this is my first time sitting at uh, 767 Polaris. There was a last minute seat change as well. Uh, it was an old configuration. This morning got an SMS. Whoa, an airplane change. I have to say this is the only time that I don't have a window. I have maybe a quarter of a window which I couldn't film. I love these little Maui flowers. Right? You guys came from Maui on the 767. Yes, we did. All right. And then it's, I heard the food is back as well. Yeah, food is back and we're excited to have flights full and passengers back and uh, we're very excited about that.
It's really exciting to see travel is back. But if you want to protect your identity and protect your data, bypass internet censorship, and also finding cheaper travel, you should consider using a VPN. Personally, I use Surfshark VPN to bypass internet censorship when I travel. It's been a huge pain if you're traveling and you couldn't access social media, sharing things with friends and families. And I use Surfshark to connect to another country to bypass the censorship. And even better, I can access to most the Netflix library in the world with just one simple VPN subscription. I'm always interested to find cheaper travels. I found that sometimes you can connect your VPN to another country to find cheaper air tickets, cheaper hotels, and cheaper rental car. When I'm traveling, I often use public Wi-Fi at the airport or in the hotel. They are not secure, and I don't feel confident to send my sensitive banking credential data over the internet. So I use a VPN to encrypt and protect my data. Now here's the best deal for Sam Tree's viewer: get Surfshark VPN at Surfshark.com/sam. Enter promo code Sam, you will get over 80% off and three additional months of subscription for free. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. If you look at the number of flights right now happening in the U.S., the numbers are doubled of last year. So we're coming out of this. If you look at Hawaii, and that number has even surpassed 2019, the pre-COVID level. And no doubt, this is the best time to fly on a wide body domestically in the U.S. All the major airlines deployed their biggest airplane flying trunk routes. So Delta are using A350 between LA, Detroit, LA, Atlanta, and Americans using 777, seven flights a day, LA to Miami, and also to Hawaii. United has also deployed the biggest 777-300ER to Hawaii and also the 787 Transcon. all throughout the pandemic for various reasons. I was definitely feeling really scary. Masks had just been mandated on board and I was taking all kinds of precautions. I was wearing gloves, I was wearing PPE, like N95 masks, face shields. And initially I was making sure that I wasn't eating or drinking on board. And once on a trip to Mexico, I <laughs> even wore a hazmat suit to prove that you could be a safe traveler and be a part of the problem at home, that things are all about your behavior. Demand is up and supply is not quite there, so we're seeing a queue when you go to check in, seeing lots of what we call gate lice, which are people crowding around the gates when they're getting ready to get on the plane. So a lot less social distancing, a little bit more loosening of restrictions. And I feel now that everyone in the US has this pent up demand for travel and finally feels confident to meet that desire by booking travel. So I have a few tips for when you're booking a flight, Earlier during the pandemic, a lot of the major carriers in the United States got rid of all of those domestic change fees. So now you might go to book a flight and it might be very expensive, but closer to your travel date, if that same flight is a lot less money, I have a quick tip to save on travel right now. So since the prices are quite high for traveling between most destinations, what you should do is you should go back and check the price of that flight. And if it's cheaper, closer to the travel date, call the airline and get a voucher for the difference. I did this on a recent trip to Cancun and I saved $350 on my flight, so it definitely works. We know aviation has been a crisis mode, but that means there's also some opportunities out there. There are two new airlines has recently launched in the US, Avilo Airlines and also Breeze Airways. My friend Chris Sloan went on the inaugural flight and shared with us his story. So on April 28, 2021, the first new airline to hopefully successfully launch in the United States, Avalo Airlines took to the skies from Burbank, California to Santa Rosa, California. So the first day of the first flight is uh, pretty, uh, actually pretty low key. You have Andrew Levy, who's the CEO and founder, very gregarious guy, personally taking the tickets and taking selfies and boarding uh, 
with everybody uh, as they uh, and welcoming everybody aboard that first flight. No, I feel great. Okay, I'm just so excited that we're finally going to take our first flight. Can't wait. Uh, you know, the flight itself fairly uh, low key. I mean, it, there's only less than an hour in the air, so we uh, are offered a well, not so much a champagne toast because as uh, our CEO Andrew Levy notes uh, the airline doesn't have its liquor license yet but uh, a toast of apple cider and um, Avalo has a very similar business model on the outside looking in as Allegiant serving secondary airports connecting those areas that have never ever had non-sub service with leisure destinations but there is a difference with uh, Avalo in that Avalo is selecting bases in large cities but secondary airports like Burbank and the recently announced New Haven, Connecticut, and connecting those with cities that are much, much smaller, that have never had any sort of nonstop service. So for instance, that's Burbank to, there's 15 cities. So for instance, that's Burbank to Santa Rosa, California in the wine country, or Medford or Eugene, Oregon, or Pasco, Washington, or Grand Junction, Colorado. And they're doing this at really, really low fares uh, to begin with, $19 in a true unbundled ULCC fashion. But what's again unique is that they are offering, uh, you know, pretty uh, inexpensive ancillary extras like baggage checking is only $10 a bag. And there is about 60 seats that are extended legroom and you can buy party boarding and things of that nature. So again, the service pretty basic at the beginning and these fares are obviously very inexpensive. So hopefully the idea is that will stimulate traffic. Breeze is going to make your life better because if you're living in a small or medium-sized city and you're used to flying through a hub, chances are we can get you there twice as fast for half the price. And that's really why Breeze was born, for convenience of our customers. And by the middle of the summer, we'll be in 15 cities, really desirable, cool cities like Norfolk, Charleston, Tampa, New Orleans, places people want to go. So what is Breeze Airways? Well, Breeze is a low-cost carrier and uh, particularly targeted toward the leisure market. And this will be the sixth ULCC in America. Now here on day one, there are a lot of staff at uh, Tampa and Charleston and Hartford, the first day of operations, to make sure that things go well. Every time there's a, a milestone like the first safety briefing or all call for doors closed or pushback or anything like that, there's wild applause. Uh, you know, there's the typical water can salute and you know, it's a very, very short flight up from Tampa to Charleston, just uh, roughly 59 minutes, maybe an hour. And Nealman comes on and makes a little PA announcement, very uh, understated, just kind of joyful to be there and makes a little bit of a nod to the airline and Ab Geeks saying, hey, I told my wife uh, that there's going to be a lot of enthusiasts and Ab Geeks and, you know, we want to give a big shout out to them and our crew and just a very humble guy just sat in the middle, uh, you know, in a regular seat with his wife. You know, we had a small... Again, little snack. In this case, Kind Bars and uh, Utz potato chips. I think he made a joke is that uh, they hope Utz help put butts in seats. And it's a very, very kind of stripped down Spartan product. Uh, no frills, but certainly friendly. Uh, very motivated, excited crew and a very casual vibe. And, uh, you know, nobody can count out uh, any creation that David Nealman has in mind. So it'll be very, very interesting to see uh, how this plays out and how the competition responds. So I know not everyone travels internationally at the moment, but in the US, the demand are bouncing back much faster, which gives a lot of confidence on the recovery. It's been a horrible year in aviation last year, but right now we had new US airlines came up and airlines are rehiring and also bringing back the furlough workers to work. So things are looking up.